So I can demonstrate it fairly well using this tool. So let's have a look at the source of this page again. I should just make that a bit bigger. So this site has protection against cross-out quest forgery because it has this random token here. Now, what I've just shown you, injecting the text into the field, that's okay, um, but if we actually steal this, um, this random token, then we could potentially do many requests and do many updates on the user's page without any further user interaction. In this case, it's just updating the status on some social networking site, but there are, um, there are many situations where if you can steal that, that token, you could potentially do bad things. For example, with a webmail account, um, potentially you could forward emails uh, from a user's account to another email address um, by doing cross request forgery if we can get this token. Okay, so here's how we can do it. We're going to use the other two tools here. We've got um, a drag tool, and we can use this to, to do a drag from any point to any other point. So we're going to drag from here down to here. The hidden field that has the token is in, is in the form around here somewhere. So uh, when the user does this, when they drag, it will select this, this text here. And then I want to extract that selection. So uh, I'm going to place it over some text that will be selected, for example, there. Now when I replay this, uh, so you can see this is the starting position. So I'm going to hold down the mouse button and do a drag. So you can see there, I just moved the mouse a little bit, but all that text was selected. And now I'm going to do a second drag, and that's going to extract the content. So you can see that this little red square here is the, that's the editable um, HTML field. Oh, that's timed out there. So if I drag this here onto there, um, that content has been stolen. So uh, this, little, uh, this little status box down here, if I click on this got HTML, this is the HTML content that has been stolen. So this could have been sent to an attacker to do something bad. So this is, this is what's visible, and this is the actual source that's been stolen. So you can see here, this is the token. So if the attacker can get, can get hold of this, they can then do an automated cross request forgery attack um, and do all sorts of bad things. Okay, so that's everything uh, for this tool. Uh, one other function is that you can actually export uh, and import this, this data here. So um, this has all the positions and the IDs of the targets and so on. So um, if we wanted to build something like the sliding block puzzle I showed you at the beginning, um, we could use this data and incorporate it in some kind of game um, or whatever. Um, it can also load, load data back in like that. Okay. So I think I'm doing okay for time. I'm just going to show you some things which I've discovered um, along the way of this research. So um, this is an Internet Explorer vulnerability that was fixed <laughs> recently. Um, what we can do here, unfortunately I haven't got a demo of this because the version of Internet Explorer on this laptop has been patched, obviously. But we can, um, using drag and drop and the Java applets, we can actually drag HTML content into an iframe on a site. Now, you remember I said before um, in the various ways to prevent um, clip jacking protection from working, we can actually load any site into editable mode. Um, and essentially what that means is that we're making a page on any domain editable and we can edit the HTML and we can drag, drop HTML into there. So essentially we can do cross-site scripting against that site by um, dropping some HTML into there. And what this allowed you to do was pretty much uh, do cross-site scripting on any site um, just by moving the mouse and using the force drag and drop in the, uh, from the Java applet. Um, this is a Firefox uh, vulnerability, which again I reported has been fixed. Um, and again, it uses the Java drag and drop. And I do actually have a demo of this. So I'll show you uh, what happens first of all. So here we go, I'm just gonna click on this button. And there we go, there's a command prompt popped up there. Um, so I'll just show you how that, exactly what happened there. Um, what I found was that um, with the force drag and drop, if, I, um, if you drag 
a URL from a Java applet, the browser will actually load that URL um, automatically. And actually, that happens in Firefox and Internet Explorer. Now, in Firefox, um, the user interface is made up of uh, special uh, Chrome web pages that have their own URLs. Um, and what this does is the first time I click, it will load a page in this hidden, uh, this window that's behind this window. So this has loaded up the, the Firefox About page in here. Now what's special about Chrome pages is that any JavaScript that's executed on them will actually run with full privileges. So it can access your file system, it can do pretty much anything. So that was the first step. I've loaded this Chrome URL, which in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. So somehow we need to get some JavaScript to execute on this. And one way we can do this is just by typing in a JavaScript URL. So if you type, that will execute. Um, and actually what happens in here is when I, oops, what happens here is it drops in, um, use a second drag and drop, a force drag and drop to drop this JavaScript into the URL bar, which then executed. So um, I thought that's quite fun. Okay, so that is next generation click jacking. So the techniques that I've showed you today um, go pretty much beyond what was originally uh, possible. So we've got techniques for improving the precision, precision of our targeting of elements on the page. We can inject arbitrary text into a web page, even if it's not vulnerable to any form of cross-site request forgery. And we can also um, go beyond uh, cross-site request forgery. So we can actually extract content from a page, even if it's not vulnerable to cross-site scripting or anything like that. Um, and we can also use the um, fragment position detection methods to, um, to tell various things about what's inside an iframe. So uh, that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, the click jacking tool is available on, on our website, which was uh, there. Um, yeah, so you can you can go and download that. It's a zip file, so you just have to extract it and you can run it in your in your browser. Um, I'll be releasing updated versions of it um, to make it work better in other browsers um, and possibly include some other techniques. For example, the form spraying. At the moment, when you're injecting text into a field, um, you have to, it's one one click per um, per field. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to. Uh, improve that so that we can have one, potentially one click, and then it will put text into lots of fields. So um, keep an eye on that on, on this page and uh, uh, for any updates that I do. Yep. Have you done a review of the uh, collected statistics on the number of sites or top sites that have um, vulnerabilities against various um, I've, I've not, sorry, the question was, um, have I looked, uh, done any, are there any numbers on um, uh, popular websites that are vulnerable to these click-jacking techniques, um, particularly these new techniques? The answer is that I've, I've only looked at a few, a few sites. Um, the mobile sites that I showed you earlier were, um, were sites that I just quickly looked at last week just to see what, what's possible. Um, the answer is that lots of sites haven't implemented um, click-jacking protection, possibly because the kind of click-jacking that was possible before like I said, you can't inject text, you couldn't inject text into fields. So there's new things that are possible, and the vast majority of sites haven't put any sort of protection in. So, yeah, there's probably lots of sites that are vulnerable to this kind of attack. What would be the best method then? The, at the moment, um, there's no 100% um, method that will protect everyone. So my recommendation would be to include the X-frame options header on all your sites. Um, for sites, for, for users that don't have the newer browsers, still include the JavaScript protection. Um, and hopefully um, browsers will sort out the minor issues that um, allow you to disable JavaScript and so on. And eventually, hopefully, eventually all browsers will have the, the support for the X-Frame options header. So at the moment, it's not ideal, but it should improve fairly rapidly.